Hi, we're at Augustus Platz in Leipzig. Short walk, short talk from here, from Augustus Platz to Thomas Church, across the middle of town, through uh, on a Grimaisha Strasse. Um, just to point out some of the um, Blockfest venues. And uh, sorry for all the construction and stuff. I'll, sh I'll put some photos in uh, of uh, what it looks like without this stuff. This is the Gewandhaus uh, Orchestra's uh, auditorium built in 1985 to replace an older structure. Um, back in 85 was still uh, part of East Germany. It was before reunification. They weren't into this kind of grand architecture, but Kurt Mazur must have uh, talked them into it. The acoustics inside are, are really perfect. They used uh, East German troops. They put them in there to, to test the sound with an audience in there. That must have been a tough gig. Uh, and of course, the music is in here. There's a lot of music in here. This is the tallest building in uh, Leipzig, the MDR building. Not too relevant to what we're talking about. Also not relevant is this museum with... Uh, I'm going to try and zoom in on the odd uh, sculptures at the top. There we go. It's odd. It's a uh, Egyptian museum. I haven't been there. They say it's good. It's a little bit, uh, you know, like co colonial European museum with stuff in it. So I've kind of avoided it, but eh, while I'm here, I might as well check it out. We're walking east. Now behind me, if you go in that direction, uh, one tram stop, there is another museum that's definitely worth going to. That's the Grassi Museum. So you can walk it, you can take a tram. walk around this but it's a museum of museums they have uh, anthropological museum they have a musical instrument museum now that's Grimaisha Strasse I'm gonna take a little detour and go through the university because there is an auditorium in here where there are Bachfest uh, venues and then we'll come out on uh, Grimaisha Strasse. This part of the university is brand new. I mean, it's finished in 2017. There was an ancient, uh, ancient medieval uh, cathedral here, St. Paul's, I think, where I believe uh, Johann Sebastian Bach played a couple of his last um, preludes and fugues for pipe organ. 544, the B minor, and 538-48. Okay, this is the way in to the actual event when there is one. There'll be a sign and people out right here. The acoustics and whatnot are really great, really beautiful. And uh, I'll, I'll throw in, instead of this blank gray wall, I'll throw in some stills of uh, how it looks inside. Last couple years, we've caught uh, Angela Hewitt, Canadian pianist. Who is not on the calendar this year? Really sad about that. Sorry, I'm using a handheld gimbal. Angela played uh, the uh, second book of the Well Tempered Clavier from memory. This town, this city, got. Uh, was uh, 
bombed in World War II, so a lot of the buildings were destroyed. And this is a combination of old buildings and various era post-war stuff. So architecturally, not that, uh, as a city, not that um, distinct. If you want to see old stuff, there is a town called Duderstadt, which wasn't touched during the war. It's all four and five hundred year old uh, Falkler structures. Okay, this should be, it isn't. This is uh, Nikolaistrasse and this Nikolai Church, uh, one of the primary uh, Bachfest venues. You know, I want to run up there because it's not too, uh, so I'm turning right off uh, Grimmeisterstrasse and going up Nikolaistrasse. We'll just take a quick look at this. Uh, cathedral where Bach himself uh, was uh, the, I don't know what to call it, right here's the two, of, this is one of the two of the four churches that uh, he uh, used to conduct in. This is really amazing place. Now it looks very old on the in outside, the inside was re- uh, Redecorated in this very newish, uh, sort of newish <laughs> Rococo design. You know, put some photos up to show that too. A little odd, you know, but the uh, pillars have this kind of tiki bar looking theme that's odd, but it's only odd to me because I'm from an odd place. I wanted to point out that uh, Augustus Platz, where we started out, was named after. Frederick August, who was the first king of Saxony, and a contemporary of the first king of Hawaii, Kamehameha. They both had reigns in the early 1800s. It's uh, really a beautiful day here. And of course, the Galleria, you know. Yes, there is one. There is one here. Now we're coming up on some stuff here. You can see some older buildings. It's really a beautiful sunny day after a fairly long period of cold, uh, cold weather. So people are all out on the streets. This is a pedestrianized street, so. There's some uh, public uh, transport kind of uh, stuff here, but not no uh, traffic, pedestrians and bicyclists. Boy, there's a lot of construction going on. It's probably a good thing. Oh, here, there's kind of a marketplace here. And when the sun is out, as it is today, there's all kinds of eating uh, opportunities. <laughs> Out in the open, yeah, it's great. See that? Now behind this is the uh, Alta Bursa, the old uh, stock exchange. I'm gonna walk up here a little bit. It was a the old stock exchange. It is now the uh, a venue, and that's that. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit on that. And it's uh, amazing. I've never been inside. I'm going to go inside maybe this Bachfest. 
but it's this rectangular thing that looks like a decorated uh, birthday cake you might get your daughter if she were a princess <laughs> and then scaled up. It's very interesting. I'm interested to check out the acoustics, but this is a nice hall in itself. Now, a lot of the um, buildings that go up, they have these malls now. So this probably used to be some kind of passage or something, but it is now um, a mall, all kinds of shops, restaurants, in the cool for the people that don't want to get sunburned. We're going to get a good look at something here. Okay, now here are a couple of landmarks. This is the uh, market plaza, market plots, marketplace, market plaza. Uh, you, large open section. We're, I'll walk up a little bit. And they use that open space for a number of things during Bach Fest. They build a stage because there are events here. And let me give you a tip, is that uh, they do rehearsals, live mic rehearsals. So a great thing to do uh, is when they're having a live mic rehearsal, come out here and sit at one of these places and have a beer. Last year we caught uh, Lang Lang rehearsing with the Gavant House Orchestra. And that was pretty cool. Looks like they're building the stage, so there's probably a rehearsal tomorrow, I'm thinking. Now this is an interesting building, and we're gonna back up a little bit so we can see it. It's the uh, Altar Rat House, the old console chamber, and now has a number of uh, has shops and that kind of stuff. It is a Bachfest venue. Um, they use one of the rooms for uh, for an event, for a concert, performance, I should say. But I'll back up and we'll get the uh, iconic view of it. Now, this is a flat uh, plaza, so you know what? It would be great. It would actually be a train station here, but that would ruin things. But they managed to do both because what they do is they put the train station under the uh, under the plaza. So walk under here, and that would be the train station. It's not the main train station. It's not the Hauptbahnhof, which is up that a ways another little while. You can walk to that too. Let me get across the street so we can look at some stuff. Whoops. We want to kind of, a lot of crowds here, very cosmopolitan crowd from all over. And it's not really, that's the Altarat house, the old console chamber. And there's not only a Bachfest venue in there, there's a great, uh, Museum of the City of Leipzig. This is really, and that's worth checking out. It goes all from prehistory because this area was um, under human habitation for thousands and thousands of years. It's rolling hills and plains, great for hunting, growing stuff, you know. So they have like prehistoric stuff all the way through the uh, uh, riots, demonstrations against uh, for reunification. I'll put it that way. Anyway, I'm gonna go past here. And, uh, so I'm going back west to uh, on Grimaischer Strasse. Uh, I'm gonna turn left here. See that tent? That's a Bachfest tent. 
That's where they house the musicians. No, I'm kidding. That's where they uh, sell tickets, or if you have a ticket you want to exchange or see if somebody will buy, this is the place it'll be. I call this the Bachfest tent, and it's air conditioned and it's a little kiosk here, and it's very temporary. They must have just opened it recently, so that's nice. Now, there's this little park here, which is really nice. Uh, let's walk through it. So, well, there are people feeding birds and stuff. I don't want to upset them, so I'm going to go back on the sidewalk. But you can see what the deal is. Okay. I'm walking fast, I'm talking fast, so you don't have to. <laughs> also using a uh, handheld gimbal, I hope, is taking some of the shakiness out of things. We're coming up on the right, the Commerce Bank. That's a old structure. That's where a hotshot named Paul Heinrich Eisenstein worked before World War II until 1933. I found his story on something called the Stumble Stone, and we're going to do that story maybe in another video. Okay, there it is. He used to drive his car from Inselstrasse here every day. This is the park, and this, my friends, is Thomas Church. This is the back. Now, a lot of you know that if you uh, are in, in a town that is unfamiliar and you're trying to find a place to eat or drink, you, you look for the spire of the church, and you go to church because they're community centers. and. Uh, there's always a place to eat or drink nearby. I'm kind of holding off. There we go. And before we go to the famous statue, we'll just go walk around it because there's some stuff here that's interesting. This is the park that we walked around. And here's a restaurant like you can sit outside and drink beer also over here right on, in the shade of the church very often there are places like this directly in the shade of the church we're walking now around thomas church Thomas Church is now to my right. We want to check a couple of things here before we uh, and it's a warm day today. It's like it's, it's kind of like Honolulu with, with air conditioning. I have a jacket on. It's probably in Fahrenheit. I guess it in the 70s. I just want to show you the restaurants next to Thomas Church. So if you get out of a concert and want to eat someplace, well, people here don't use Yelp. Uh, the thing I wanted to show you was this, that you need to go to. This is the uh, Bach Museum. It's right across from... Thomas Church is definitely worth going to. Uh, they usually have a special kind of display on something related to the music or the period. And it's very modern and set up very well. So I wanted to show you that. And then we're going to loop back here, go back to the church, because I wanted to show you, of course, The
famous statue that you've seen. If I, I can show you the background, the spire, and everything. And uh, it's a life-size statue of Bach. He was nine feet tall and, no, I'm kidding, of course, it's larger than life. But then Bach was larger than life himself. So he has kind of a scowl on. He's wondering why people are wasting their time taking his picture rather than, than uh, practicing. So. Now, a lot of the rehearsals, Okay, this is their like gift shop where if you wanted to get the uh, the Bach postcard or the postcard of Thomas Church, of course, this is the spot. I'm going to come back. Some political um, posters up. It's coming up on their election also, I do believe. So I'm going to go around the front of the church. Is there something... Uh, else to look at and then we'll end our short tour this is the front of the church where tour buses and whatnot uh, go stop, drop people off. They're coming from a venue that's not within walking distance. If it's within walking distance, I'd really advise uh, the walk because there's all kinds of cool stuff to see. This is the uh, front of the church. Okay, in front of uh, Thomas Church, there's another statue in front across the entryway path, and it's uh, Felix Mendelssohn. Uh, why is Mendelssohn's statue here? Well, in 1840, I think around 1840, he was like 17, he was this like kid, and like somebody had showed him the uh, score for the Matthews Passion and he just kind of went crazy and he said we got to show this we got to do this thing as a as a concert so he revived the performance of the Matthews Passion and it was as a concert piece not a church piece he revived the interest in uh, in Bach so his statue is here very fittingly, so we started our tour at the Gewand House where Felix Mendelssohn was a director and we ended here at his statue. And, and that's it for today. Uh, talk to you guys later. If uh, this has been helpful at all, then there's a link in the description. You can buy me a coffee or whatever. Okay, talk to you guys later, bye.